So this is a close reading of Macbeth, Act 4, Scene 1. This is Part 2, which I titled The Apparitions. These are the riddles told to Macbeth. So if you recall, Macbeth has gone into the witch's cave. Uh, they have prepared this special potion for him. Uh, and so he drinks that potion. Um, and he expects to see visions or hear something. Um, he has gone in demanding answers to his questions. And um, the witches say, sure, you know, let's here drink this and you'll get your answers. Now, he's never allowed to ask any questions. They simply give him these visions, um, which become sort of riddles, and it's up to him to interpret them. So although he continually asks something, um, he is continually told to be quiet and just listen to what he has shown. So what is he shown? Well, first of all, he is shown um, these images. There, it's always preceded. That means just before we see it, we hear thunder. So there's this explosion, this thunder. You can think of the theatrics on stage. And uh, we see the first vision, the first apparition. Um, and you got to imagine it's a soldier. It's an armored knight. And they say, uh, beware of Macduff. Watch your back around Macduff. Okay, so he says, first, I'll just, you know, have that guy killed. Then he sees uh, a bloody child, uh, a, a young infant, a newborn covered in blood, says, uh, none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. None of woman born. And so that means that anybody uh, who is born from a woman cannot harm him. And so he says, so why should I fear Macduff? Why should I worry about Macduff? You said, watch my back around Macduff. Duff and you know everybody's born of a woman so why should I worry about him I'll kill him anyway the third thing he sees is a young king it is a young boy with a crown holding a tree and the young king says Macbeth will be king until the forest walks up the hill to his castle and so once again Macbeth goes well you know, Forrest can't walk, so that means I am going to remain king until my old age because nobody can kill me, nobody can harm me because everybody's born of a woman. So we have those three riddles that are embedded in it. Why should he be aware of Macduff if no one born from a woman can harm him? And why are they telling him something about a forest walking up the hill? He interprets it that way, but I want you to be thinking, how can a forest walk up the hill? How can a person not be born of a woman? And these are the riddles. The last thing he has shown, because he demands it, is he wants to know what's the deal with Banquo. Remember, he tried, to, he tried to challenge fate. He tried to change the path of his own destiny by having uh, Banquo and his son killed. Um, but he failed in that, and the son got away. So when he is shown the outcome of that, he is shown that, in fact, there will be a long line of descendants from Banquo. Um, and so it almost implies that by challenging fate, he was playing right into the hands of fate. So one last time, the visions and the riddles. Why should he be worried about Macduff if none of woman born can hurt him? And how can the forest possibly walk up the hill? You will be reading part of this with this section in which Macduff demands that they show him this. And so this idea that Macbeth goes in and demands that they show him, and he wants to hear it directly from their masters. He's tired of dealing with the witches. He wants the information from the source. And so in that way, he fully embraces evil. He fully asks for the evil to help him out in his quest for more power.